do you know who has access to what? This is the Identity at the Center podcast. If you're looking for identity and access management talk, you've come to the right place. And now, on to the show. Welcome to another episode of Identity of the Center. Jim and I are in Seattle this week for the Carpenter Cole Consumer Identity World Conference. That's a mouthful. That's Seattle, Washington. Seattle, since true, Seattle, Washington. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about our strategies and how we attack conferences in, in a good way, not a bad yeah. way. <laughs> <laughs> we should probably rephrase that. Right? <laughs> this our, is be, our, be our conference before attendance. the conference, so if anything happens, <laughs> right, this is exhibit we did a. not attack the conference. Right, this is not exhibit A for the uh, impending lawsuit. No, it is the strategy of conference attendance. That's how about that. So we have a special guest. We have Jamie Lewis Gross, Global Director of Solution Strategy at Savient, former Identropy colleague. And even before that, I know Jamie for 10 years, 15 years? Probably closer to 15. Closer to 15. That is how old I am, not Jamie. Um, no, I don't when know. I the was the timeless at, one. <laughs> the timeless one. Exactly. When I was at Walgreens, Jamie was my first project manager as her customer from an IM implementation we were doing. So we go way, way, way back. Way back. Way back in the day. Way back to password management. Exactly. Yeah, password management. <laughs> she just happened to be in Seattle at the same time. We dragged her kicking and screaming from a dinner. Said, no, you're coming over to our very posh hospitality suite to record a podcast with us. Yes, and here I am. Here you are. So. The hospitality suite being your free, let's, let's be honest, okay, yeah. free upgrade. Free upgrade. It's one of the benefits of travel, right? Yes. Is sometimes you get, and I, I, I'll have to say, this is probably the nicest room that I've been in in a very long time. Yeah, this is pretty sweet. Yeah. I have to agree. I did not get this upgrade. <laughs> we have a sofa, a dining table, two bathrooms, two refrigerators. This is, I, I could just probably live here. Um, <laughs> so Jeff, in terms yeah. of going over strategy going into conferences, I think even before that, picking which conferences we attend or want to attend going into a year, mm -hmm. it's probably a big one. Now, Jamie, you work for a software vendor, so I'm assuming a lot of the conferences you go to is, would be based on you know, what your company is sponsoring or things like that. Maybe you could talk to us a little bit about that. Yeah, so it's really about you know, we want to demonstrate capabilities of the platform. So we really select conferences based upon where we are in the market. So, uh, you know, different partnerships. So there's, there's different reasons why we select different conferences, but obviously we're always going to attend the big hitters like the Gartner IAM Summit. We're going to attend partner related conferences like the AWS conference, the Microsoft conference and so on. So you'll generally see us at a lot of national um, events, global events, and also regionally based events. What about more security focused ones like RSA? Do you guys have any presence? Like, is that something that makes sense? Even though it's more of like a just general information security, there's a lot of IAM vendors there, but will we see you there next year? Hopefully if, if we're able to attend. Yeah. So I think our philosophy being in uh, cybersecurity, uh, being in cloud security, those are the types of conferences that you're going to see us at because we definitely span across the platform. Um, we believe in the unification of identity, the ability to context switch very quickly, um, ownerships over identities, uh, whether they are logical um, related identities, whether they're bots, whether they're service accounts. So absolutely, we're going to play in all those different spaces from a conference perspective. So Jeff, you're pretty big into, I mean, you love being at conferences, right? So, Actually do, yeah. Yeah, so rare. <laughs> I mean, you start the year, you look at all the conferences, there's probably a dozen, but you can't be at conferences every week, right? So how do you go about you know, identifying the conferences that interest you and then prioritizing which ones are most important? Well, I think a lot of it has to do with what's your role, right? So from an identity management perspective, I'm looking for conferences that are in that field, right? It's a lot easier to justify, hey, I'd like to go to an IAM conference 
when you do IM work versus, hey, I want to go to, you know, uh, PAX West, which is an amazing conference out here in Seattle <laughs> for like uh, comics and, and games and stuff like that. It has nothing to do with anything that I do professionally, but still find interesting. So you have to find something I think that lines up with your role and then pick and choose the ones that make the most sense. So for me, I think RSA is a very good one. It's very big. It can be very expensive, especially since it's in San Francisco and hotel rates in San Francisco can be pretty crazy. Mm -hmm. um, but I think that one's still worth it just because of the sheer number of people who show up to that one. You could spend easily two, three days just in the vendor hall, going through all the different products that are out there. You know, from, from my perspective, I like to try and find something new. Um, you know, it's not that, you know, the current players are anything wrong with them, but I want to know like what's next, right? We know SailPoint, we know Savian, we know Oracle, we know IBM, Microsoft, et cetera. What's the next wave coming out? And, and at these larger conferences, RSA specifically, um, Gartner sometimes doesn't really have a lot, of, a lot of newer stuff, but they do have some things there. Identiverse is a good one that happens in the summer. Um, so I try to space them out and look for new things coming yeah. out from there. And then also from a, like a attendance standpoint, I try to go as an attendee, not as a company man. Not as a booth, <laughs> not, not not booth babe, babe yeah, <laughs> or uh, any type of role like that. Although, you know, that is part of the role that you may end up talking. I know Damien and I have been at conferences where, you know, we're manning the booth, so to speak, and talking right. with prospective clients and stuff like that. Yeah, and I think especially now, so moving back into the product side, uh, certainly, there's acquisition of knowledge uh, for the purposes of conferences, but I would say more so on the advisory side, consulting, educating customers, conferences, in my perspective, the role that I played previously was all about how much information can you acquire in a short amount of time to be able to better educate customers. And like I said, certainly that's something that uh, I still seek out. Uh, however, now being on the product side, you really want to immerse yourself as an organization to make sure that your message is heard. So that's a little bit of, of the difference now. Have that 30 second elevator pitch honed mm -hmm. and yes. ready to go. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, one of the things I've been thinking, so different people are listening to the podcast and may not know some of these conferences. So Gartner, I think, is kind of the kind of the leading IM industry um, conference. I mean, it's the one that I think the most people go to when they're first getting into the industry or they're first taking over a role as like a, um, an IM program manager, gives you a real framework in terms of how to think about IM. Mm -hmm. So it's kind of been the heavy hitter over the years. For me personally, as I've been in the industry for 15 years, a lot of the fundamentals that they cover in the sessions are more basic for me. I, I still like to go every other year or every year for the networking aspect, but in terms of the content, I'm not getting a lot of new stuff from right. it. Um, Want to know what you guys think about that. And then also Identiverse seems to really be coming on the scenes in terms of kind of the, the most, or one of the most popular IM conferences. Yeah, I like, I like the Identiverse Conference. I think that is poised to become the IM conference of, of the year, so to speak. Um, not that the other ones are bad or don't have a value, but I think Identiverse is very specifically focused on identity. And it was started by Ping um, several years ago. It's been rebranded to Identiverse. And I think Ping has actually done a really good job of making it not a Ping sales conference, right? It is more of an identity conference. They have lots of good speakers. It is a more technical tract of, of uh, presentations typically than what you'll find on a Gartner. Gartner is, you know, I think it's, I think it's Gartner sessions are more tailored to beginners and I am executives who are, you know, just kind of getting into it and yeah, the networking aspect of it. But I think, yeah, I, I think Identiverse is coming on strong. It's pretty small still. There's only, you know, I'm not sure how many people, but you know, they did it in one small hotel <laughs> in, in Washington, D.C. this year. And it was, you know, a lot of the sessions were overflowing. But um, I think it's I think it's about to become the big one. What do yeah. you think, Jimmy? Yeah, I agree. I thought that there was a lot of good material and it, it's very worthwhile for the space that we're in. What do you guys think of, well, let me ask a, a different question. What's the largest 
IT conference you've ever been to? RSA. Yeah. RSA. It's like 35,000 people or something like that. Downtown San Francisco, Moscone Center. I mean, it's, it's a huge, huge thing. It's, it's crazy expensive, but it's definitely the biggest one, I think. So I was in Oracle World, and they had 60,000 attendees. Oh, cool. Yeah, that was mind-blowing. What's That's, that? Oracle World, yeah. I think that one's pretty big. Yeah. And, that, I mean, obviously, I am only one small component of Oracle World. Mm-hmm. But I've been to Oracle World. I've been to CA's conferences. That was also very large and not just focused on I am. Um, I'm not sure how many people attend Gartner and Identiverse. I know Identiverse is still relatively small. I think Gartner is a little bit bigger, um, but they're, it's like anything else that's niche, right? It's, it's IM is the niche. So people who are interested in IM are typically going to go to Identiverse in the summer, which is when they have it. And then Gartner's IM Summit, at least for the U.S., is in usually the first week of December-ish, somewhere in that time frame. So, so the, the three biggest uh, vendor conferences I've been to have been Oracle, CA, Microsoft. So I was at the Microsoft Partner Conference. And one thing that sets us apart is that because of their large scale, they'll do some really cool stuff that is outside of the conference track, things like concerts and, you know, entertainment. <laughs> kind of cool. Yeah. I mean, it, it's like a fun experience anyway. As fun as a conference can be. I, when I was at the Microsoft <laughs> one, they had Carrie Underwood play at – the Washington National Baseball Stadium, they, you know, sealed the place off just for the Microsoft conference in D.C. It was pretty cool. I guess if you got Microsoft money, you can do that. <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. So I, I think the most important thing, though, is really the swag that comes out of the conferences. Conference swag is a very important feature. Mm-hmm. So what's your philosophy on that? Uh, most of it sucks. <laughs> There's a lot of just crap out there that people give away. Uh, ourselves included. <laughs> Sometimes we don't. You know, wait, have wait. One year we had, I think, the worst giveaway ever. Which about the orange cups. The orange cups. <laughs> do you remember the orange cups? I do remember the orange cups. I mean, they might might have been memorable because of how much they sucked. I think that was before I joined Entropy, actually. Or because they were so awesome for beer pong. <laughs> they they look, but people thought they were like the cheap yeah. solo cups. So how do we describe this for people who are listening? So a red solo cup, right? Mm-hmm. But insulated, thicker. Heavier duty, a quality solo cup. Is that how you would describe it? Yeah. Um, but orange. But orange, right? Because you know the identity cover, etc. I have two of them in my house. I use them all the time. I got like ten of them do. But swag, I think, is an important one. Um, the bigger the conference, the better the swag. Although I have noticed a shift now, where it used to be that there was a lot more stuff being given away, and a lot of it has changed now, like raffles. Right. You have to stop by the booth, oh, right. put your, you know. To get your, the big ticket passport thing in. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah. I did win Bose head- headphones one year, which was kind of cool. I, I had already left the conference. So I had to like walk from the Luxor all the way to Mandalay Bay. Like, I'll be right there. <laughs> I used to make a big effort to get stuff, and t shirts was one that I really liked. But I found that those t shirts, once you washed them once or yeah. twice, they just. <laughs> you mean it's not a high quality t shirt? Not out a high quality t shirt. Out of a no. security conference? That's shocking. Yeah. What's your philosophy? I've never been one to take home paraphernalia. I do think that we have one good piece of swag, and that is the Tide pen. It comes in very handy. Tide pen? Yeah, for removing stains. Oh, for stains. stains. I'm like, Tide pen. Okay. Yeah. Outside That's of that. Useful. It, That's useful. It's useful. Yeah. It's very useful. Um, but no, I haven't been the type of person that likes to collect and bring home things in my suitcase. If you want to see people who do that, go to RSA. <laughs> because there are people who that is their I think that's their job. That's it's, so to, reason <laughs> it's to go to each booth and get something. They walk out with bags and bags and bags of stuff. I don't know how they're gonna get that stuff home. Ship it, I guess, but yeah. they I mean we're not, and we're not talking small bags, like huge bags full of just yeah, stuff. They got, like if they have stress, they have eight stress relief <laughs> balls now. <laughs> right. They're exactly. gonna be set. Yeah. But we're getting a good swag for identity. Don't jinx it. Is it happening? It's gonna, yeah, it's going to happen. I don't, you know what? We have good swag coming. Let's leave it at that because we don't want to let competition in um, on how good our, our upcoming swag may be. Uh, good point. Good yeah. point. So we should focus then on kind of the philosophy you go into a conference with. So let's start with networking. 
is your goal to meet as many people as possible, make a few quality networking contacts, or are you don't care about that at all? Jamie, you go first. <laughs> so I would say it depends upon the role in which I'm in at the conference. So if I am in a role where it's about acquiring new customers, then I want to probably meet as many potential opportunities as possible, get the message out there. I would say, generally speaking, however, my personality is all about acquiring knowledge. And I would say that I want to focus in on the right amount of subject matter expertise that I'm looking to acquire. And therefore, the contact points would be um, lower, very focused in nature. Yeah. Yeah, I would say I'm relatively similar. When I attend a conference, my main mission is to attend the sessions, right? Find something, bring something back, learn, et cetera. Um, I would rather do that, to be honest with you, than try to do networking. It's not something that I'm typically interested in doing because I find that that takes time away from the other. Because a lot of times you go to these conferences and you know, you'll be in a session or there's a session coming up that you want to attend and you may get pulled off to go and talk to the prospective customer or, or something like that. Which that's fine, right? That's part of the part of the job and part of the business, but it's taking me away from my purpose there is to learn stuff. And I think that's sometimes you know what clients want too is you're attending conferences on their behalf. What did you see in here at RSA, Black Hat, Gartner, Identiverse, con, you know, uh, Consumer Identity World, those sorts of things. Um, and that's just, I mean, that's my own personal philosophy. My philosophy is kind of go into it with like a people person attitude, like. Even I realize that I'm the kind of guy who you wind up sitting next to me on the plane. I'm going to come up with some small talk and feel you out. Do you want to chit chat? And there are going to be people at the conference who will either chit chat or won't. And I'll meet people who, you know, maybe a prospective customer or maybe a contact that, you know, stay in touch or I might learn one or two things or maybe not. Mm -hmm. Maybe they'll just learn something from me, but. I just go into it kind of, you know, being friendly. Yeah. I don't know. I, I find that works for me. Being friendly? Being friendly. Mm, that's a shocking <laughs> idea. Yeah. <laughs> for me? <laughs> um, I like Jamie's answer, though. I mean, I think that's, that's spot on. It really depends why you're at the conference. Right. Right. Yeah, that's true. So um, the other topic would be when you go and you look at the agenda, and I know that different conferences are going to present differently, but a lot of times with conferences, you'll have tracks. And one of the tracks might be, let's just put a fictitious example out there. You've got a track that's like your lane. This is what you do for your job. This is your interest area. And then you've got a track that um, is just interesting to you. Mm -hmm. How do you just... How do you divide up your time or how do you, so tomorrow or in the conference that we're attending, they've got one track, I think it's sometime tomorrow or Thursday, where it's focused on consumer identity management. That's definitely my lane. That's the area I focus on. But then they've got a track at the same exact time on AI and bots and marketing. And I'm mm -hmm. like, I'm just so interested in that. I'm so interested in the idea of, you know, tracking people and then how that information is taken and, you know, used to predict your next move and then how that interplays with privacy. So I'm going to put it to you guys first and then I'll talk to, talk, talk about how I would divide up my time. Ladies first. So I'm going to go back to what capacity am I acting in? Uh, do I need competitive intel? Do I need to understand future positioning? I would say I tend to like to stay in my lane, but I have to force myself out of my lane. So I think I would gravitate towards the things that are visionary, future forward, and relatable 
to some of maybe the more basic and rudimentary concepts that I can at least take what's futuristic and apply them back to what we're doing now, but how customers can evolve. Yeah. Okay. I definitely do not look to attend things that I already know. If I'm going to go to a conference, I want to learn something new. So if it's something that's not necessarily my wheelhouse, and it's something that I think is interesting as far as both personally, but also professionally, I will go to those. Now, what happens a lot of time though is, you know, sessions get scheduled and there's like eight different things all at the same time that you want to <laughs> want to go to. Um, and then there's like nothing like the next hour. So it, it's, it's just something that happens at every conference that, that I attend anyway. Um, so I, I have a lot of flexibility where I try to bounce between different sessions. So if I'm sitting for five minutes in one session and it's not going the way that I thought it would, give me the slides, I'll go to the next, you know, go to, go to a different session. And yeah, that's out. a good point. A lot of times you can get the slides afterwards. Mm -hmm. The way I kind of think about it is that if it's something in my lane, probably 75% or more of what's going to be discussed, I already know. Mm -hmm. So I'm not there to hear confirmation of the beliefs I already have. I'm there to understand new perspectives. So I think going into you know this particular session where it's one or the other, I'm gonna to choose to do the AI piece because it's just such an interest area. And I think it's something that is going to have a great influence on IAM going forward. AI? AI. That's yeah. a bold statement. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's my bold statement. <laughs> Drop the mic. Drop the mic. I'll leave on a high note, Jim. Yeah. Um, good. Well, you know. So you're going you, to the AI one tomorrow? I'm going to go to the AI. I think it's Thursday. Good call. AI Thursday. and bots. AI and bots. That's AI, where it's at. Yeah. Bots are where it's at. Um, one of the things that I find hard is really just clearing off my work calendar mm -hmm. to be at a conference. Yep. I mean, and this is actually, I feel, feel like this week I'm the worst offender that I've ever been. Normally I can get down to like one meeting a day and I've got some where it's like, I've got two, two hour meetings and back to back days. I just think it's, it's bad planning on my part, but kind of what is your philosophy on that? Yeah, I, um, it's tough sometimes. I, you have to balance being available for work and customers and having to just get you know your normal work done in addition to trying to set aside time for um, conferences. I try to reschedule things as much as I can, yeah. but sometimes it just doesn't happen, right? And you have to kind of duck out of a conference, which stinks, but it is what it is. But I do try to be proactive about it, look at my calendar weeks, months in advance, right? And block the time so that people don't schedule it um, or move things around if something comes up that is relatively new, so. It feels like more of the conferences we attend are on the West Coast. And I'm wondering, is that intentional so that people can shift their day three hours? I think or it's better it because, weather. Do you think it's better weather? I think, it, I think conferences, are better attended when they're in a location that is either cheap to get to or is a destination. I was thinking the other thing was a lot of the tech companies are in the Bay Area yeah. and then they'll have their people go to the conference but they don't have to pay for them to be at a hotel. Right. I think I think most conferences shift around. There are a few that are static. Yeah. Um, RSA has traditionally been in San Francisco, although they sent a survey out last year after was over um, polling people for other locations. So they mm -hmm. may be looking, I don't know if they're gonna do it or not, but you know, it sounds like they're at least considering, do they move out of San Francisco and go somewhere else? Gartner is typically in Las Vegas. Mm -hmm. um, I know a lot of people don't necessarily care for Vegas. I think it's great for conferences. They have everything you need there. I love Vegas. And it's entertaining if you can uh, you know, avoid the distractions, but at least it has all the services that you need. Plenty of hotel rooms, plenty of restaurants, plenty of conference facilities, et cetera. Yeah. They're designed to handle mass amounts of traffic. How do you feel about Vegas? I don't love Vegas. No? I feel like the least amount of time <laughs> I can spend in Vegas, the better. It's dirty. Yeah. I just, it's not a fan. But if you go to the Cosmo, it's not dirty. It's No, maybe... but that's a great venue. Yeah. I just 
don't. That's not my preference. Okay. What's your where is your favorite conference spot? Oh, favorite conference spot. And you can't say hotel room after the conference is over. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I would say I've been to conferences in Chicago, but Chicago's just it's a real crapshoot for weather. Yeah, exactly. But I can say Chicago that because I'm from Chicago. A personal city favorite of mine. I'm gonna say with Chicago. Not Orlando realize. does a good job with conferences. Yeah, Orlando's well, good. If you can stay indoors. <laughs> you don't yeah, you don't like the weather even in January it's too hot. It's, it's too warm. I like San Francisco. I think it's a Austin. great spot. I like Austin. Austin's Austin's not bad. Nashville. Yeah. If I had to if I had to choose, it would be Seattle, San Francisco, San Diego, or Vegas. Any of those spots are great. Right. I've never been to Denver for a conference, but I hear that's pretty good. I think uh, Denververse is actually going to be there next year, so that'll be my opportunity. I like Denver. Yeah. All right, Jeff. So what are we going to do our next podcast on? Are we going to do a wrap up of this conference? Yeah, I think sure. we're going to try. Um, try to put together some thoughts around consumer identity world and what we came away with and if we stuck to our plans or not. Um, if we uh, saw anything that's interesting out there um, and come back with uh, a recap on that. Probably next week, I'm thinking. Give us some time to put it soak in and put it together our thoughts. I think also if you're listening to the podcast and you've had any thoughts, if you're like screaming into the radio as you were uh, listening to the podcast, radio, radio yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the big, if you were listening on a track, um, no, but if you wanted to say something, send it to us and we can do like a mailbag kind of thing. Yeah, we've gotten some good feedback. Uh, questions at identity at the center.com is the email address. We read every one, and surprisingly, people do email us yes. <laughs> with very nice words of encouragement and ideas for topics, and we certainly take those topics and um, it typically takes us a few weeks to get it into the rotation because we have things kind of planned out, but um, we do listen and, and read all those and appreciate the, the feedback we've been getting. So tell your friends, <laughs> like, subscribe. I feel like a stupid YouTuber. Um, <laughs> like and subscribe. Yeah, like Five subscribe. star. Yeah. Oh, brush of brush with greatness today. Uh, for people who know MKBHD on YouTube, Marquez Brownlee, I saw him at the Seattle airport. As I was leaving my gate, he was going to his gate. We're on the on the on the moving walkways. I saw him just bump on the way past as we're going through. So I think this trip has been successful. Brush with greatness. <laughs> exactly. The guys like he has like nine million subscribers on YouTube. That's huge. That is huge. Yeah. And I've never heard of him. Never heard of him. He's a tech he's a tech YouTuber, he does a lot of reviews and stuff like that. I don't, want to, I don't need to necessarily plug his show because he has millions <laughs> of people listening to that. But I thought it was quite cool. It's like, oh, that's so and so, I recognize him right away. We might be able to get him three or four more subscribers. <laughs> <laughs> or lose a couple. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of dorks of I am when we're talking about you. <laughs> yeah. All right. Well, I think dorks from uh, talking about I am is probably a good way to end it. Jamie, thank you very much for staying up, staying with us. Yes. Thank you for having me. Thanks, I enjoyed the podcast and I would be more than happy to be a special guest in the future. Oh my gosh. You should see the look on her face right now. <laughs> a forced smile. All right. We're going to call it uh, at this point. Thank you very much for listening. We'll You've been listening to the Identity at the Center podcast. To access all episodes, visit identityatthecenter.com.